Number 10. Western Xia Imperial Tombs The Xia Dynasty is considered the first dynasty of China, and the lines between history and myth are quite blurred. There isn't much archaeological evidence going back to the very beginning, but what researchers have found are some very impressive imperial tombs. Established in what is now northwestern China, the Western Xia Dynasty existed from 1038 to 1227 AD. Before the Western was just the Xia, with historical records talking about a giant flood that destroyed the area around 1920 BC. The first legendary emperor struggled to control the flooding, and the one who could help control the water became the next emperor. What little is known about the empire's founders is based on limited excavations that have been carried out at its imperial burial site. Situated at the foot of the Helan Mountains in the Gobi Desert, the Western Xiao Mausoleums make up a massive burial complex of the Western Xia Dynasty. Only one mausoleum has been excavated to date and has been connected with the kingdom's first emperor, Jing Zong. Occupying an area of some 50 square kilometers, the Western Xia Imperial Tombs include nine imperial mausoleums, 254 smaller tombs, a large building complex, and more than 10 brick and tile kiln sites. This place was left behind by the Tangut civilization, which is now long gone. This site went undiscovered by several early 20th century explorers before finally catching the attention of an archaeologist who captured it in an aerial photograph during the 1930s. The Western Xia dynasty came to an end when the Mongols invaded and destroyed it during the 13th century. Its history was unfortunately obscured by the destruction of the culture's architecture and written records. Most of what experts know was learned relatively recently, during the 20th century. I am excited to announce that today's video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer. Hunt a Killer is a murder mystery game that not only is extremely fun to play, but also some of the proceeds from every box that gets sold goes to the Cold Case Foundation, an organization that is dedicated to helping solve real-life cold cases. Hunt a Killer is a very unique game where your help is needed in an investigation to help solve a murder. You can practice your detective skills from the comfort of your own home, especially when it's chilly outside. You don't want to be chasing murderers outside in cold, dark alleys. Plus, for anyone who is obsessed with true crime in your life, this is the perfect gift for the holidays. This game is extremely fun, and believe me, I know a lot about board games because I don't know about you, but I've played a lot of them in the last year and a half. Hunt a Killer brings people together as you decode ciphers, examine clues, sift through evidence, audio recordings, eliminate suspects, and find murder weapons until you crack the case and catch the killer. It's like an escape room delivered right to your door. Right now, you can go to huntakiller.com slash origins explained and use code origins for $10 off anything you want. Again, make sure to use the code origins for a $10 discount. Go forth and catch the killer. Number 9. Buried Game Pieces While excavating an ancient building at the Tel Kadesh site in Israel in 2008, archaeologists found a puzzling collection of personal belongings. It was a group of artifacts that were buried beneath a paving stone during the 2nd century BC. The artifacts included a terracotta figurine of the god Eros, also known under the Roman name as Cupid, a bone hairpin, two metal writing instruments, and 23 glass game pieces. Most of the items were of high-quality craftsmanship. They were also very well preserved, indicating that they were buried deliberately and carefully. But why? Archaeologists were especially interested in the glass game pieces. It's unusual to find so many game pieces together, save for the rare exception of a child's grave. There were 18 round pieces used to play mancala, and five knucklebone pieces all placed together. Archaeologist Adi Ehrlich went on a quest for more answers, and she found a lead in an ancient text. It told the story of a young woman named Hippa, who deposited her treasured game pieces into the ground as an offering to the god Artemis around the time of her wedding. While the tale's exact author is unknown, his name was Antipater, and someone of that name actually lived in the nearby city of Sidon during the late 2nd century BC. Ehrlich's findings present the very realistic possibility that the Tel Kadesh hoard belonged to Hippa. Number 8. Tower of Babel Tablet According to one of the Bible's origin myths, following the Great Flood, a group of people established a city in Babylon and settled here. They decided to build a tower extending to heaven to make a name for themselves, 
known as the Tower of Babel. At the time, there was a single language spoken by all people. But God saw this tower and thought, if my people can build this magnificent structure with one language, imagine what they could do with more. And so he scrambled their speech and made them speak many languages. This story is often seen as a way to explain why people speak different languages. Whether or not the Tower of Babel actually existed is a hotly debated topic among scholars. Dr. Andrew George, a professor of Babylonia at the University of London, claims that he has found solid evidence proving the tower's existence. He discovered an ancient baked tablet in the city of Babylon, showing King Nebuchadnezzar II, who ruled Babylon 2,500 years ago, next to a seven-story ziggurat, or a stepped pyramid or tower. This very real building may have inspired the story in the Bible, because at the time, the structure would have been the most impressive thing built for miles and miles around. It's one of only four known depictions of the king ever found. Additionally, the tablet contains an account of the tower's construction. Discovered over a century ago, roughly 80 miles south of modern-day Baghdad among the ruins of Babylon, it bears evidence of what some researchers believe is the Tower of Babel. Dr. George says that the relief describes recruiting workers from several different regions, including the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf. Not all experts agree with Dr. George's analysis. Other researchers pointed out that Nebuchadnezzar II's reign doesn't coincide with the Bible's timeline, which holds that the Tower of Babel was built during the 3rd millennium BC, long before the king's rule. Therefore, if the Bible is accurate, then the carving can't possibly depict the Tower of Babel. Number 7. Galactic Medieval Tombs Archaeologists recently announced the discovery of over 10,000 medieval Islamic tombs in the Kassala region of eastern Sudan. A study suggests that the burials are arranged in obscure galactic patterns. Researchers noticed right away that the clustered burials made sense based on the environment, but wondered if there was a deeper meaning behind their placement. The team examined the tomb's layout using satellite imagery and a method called the Neyman Scott Cluster Process which was originally developed to study stars and galaxies' spatial patterns. It's the first time archaeologists decided to use this technique on Earth. They found that there were smaller clusters of burials surrounding several so-called parent tombs, reflecting the location's sacredness to the people who laid the deceased to rest there. Tombs were also found in greater numbers in places with more access to building materials and favorable topography. The burial grounds most likely belong to the semi-nomadic Beha people, who still live in the region today. Because very few of the tombs have been excavated, there is a lot more to uncover here. Number 6. The Identity of the Rude Man The Cerny Abyss Giant, also called the Rude Man, is a large artwork carved into the landscape on a hilltop in Dorset, England. Researchers have long wondered about the identity of the 180-foot geoglyph, which is equipped with a 35-foot phallus. The giant has long been a fertility icon, with legend claiming that a couple will have reproductive success if they do the deed on top of the geoglyph's crotch. But until recently, experts were unsure whether the artwork truly was a Bronze Age fertility symbol, or if it was perhaps a Roman depiction of Hercules, or even a parody of Oliver Cromwell, a 17th-century politician who led armies against King Charles I during the English Civil War. Last year, scientists took samples from the giant's elbows and feet. They determined that he was created sometime between 700 and 1100 AD. It's the only chalk figure in the region that has been dated to the late Saxon or early medieval periods. This fascinating discovery leaves lingering questions about the rude man and the many other chalk geoglyphs found throughout southern England. Very little is known about the artwork, which includes a 360-foot-long horse, as well as war memorials, a giant kiwi bird, and more. The oldest geoglyph dates back around 3,000 years, and while over 30 survive, as many as 60 have disappeared over time. The reason for their creation is a mystery, yet people have carefully maintained many of the geoglyphs from one generation to the next, making sure that they don't grass over and become obscured. Since their original meaning is unknown, people have taken the liberty of making their own stories and assigning meaning to the colossal images over the centuries. What do you think was the purpose of these ancient glyphs? Fertility? Giant graffiti? Or some other purpose? 
Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Ancient Fruit Baskets Once Egypt's largest port, the ancient city of Tonis Heraklion began disappearing during the 2nd century BC, when it partially sank below the waters of Abukir Bay near modern-day Alexandria. Tonis Heraklion was even further submerged during the 8th century AD, amid a series of natural disasters, including an earthquake and tidal waves. The city's ruins were rediscovered around 20 years ago by French marine archaeologist Frank Gaudio. Discoveries are still being made at the site, and researchers recently announced that they found hundreds of bronze and ceramic artifacts, as well as wicker baskets dating back to the 4th century BC. After laying untouched for over 2,000 years, the baskets were still filled with grape seeds and a palm fruit called doum, which the ancient Egyptians considered sacred. Gaudio believes that the baskets and fruit may have managed to survive because they were originally placed in an underground room, perhaps as part of a funeral or a burial rite. A burial mound and grave offerings found nearby make Gaudio's theory seem more likely. Evidence of a burning ritual at the site indicates that people were banned from going there, and that it was sealed for centuries before Taunus Heraklion was swallowed by the sea. Gaudio said that the site appears to have only been used once, but the reason why is a mystery. He hopes that the many artifacts found at the site will help answer this burning question. And now for number 4, but first, wanted to give a big shout out to Star Child and Eve Cornelius. Thanks so much for your support, we wouldn't be here without you! If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we have lots more amazing discoveries coming up! Number 4. Early Trigonometry The ancient Greeks are widely credited with inventing the foundations of modern trigonometry, but a new discovery indicates that the Babylonians may have used it 1,500 years earlier. A new study describes how Australian mathematician Daniel F. Mansfield came to this conclusion by examining a series of strange numbers on an ancient clay tablet fragment known as Plimpton 322. Created in ancient Mesopotamia sometime between 1822 and 1762 BC, the artifact has long perplexed experts since its discovery. In 1945, researchers said that the tablet appears to contain evidence of a primitive form of trigonometry. Mansfield sought to prove his theory that this type of math was developed to accommodate the need to mark boundaries during the rise of private property. He found answers in Psi 427, a tablet that was made in modern-day Iraq between 1900 and 1600 BC. It describes the sale of a plot of land and contains extremely precise information about its boundaries. Coupled with Plimpton 322, it appears as though the Babylonians developed geometry for creating accurate perpendicular lines. Mansfield backed up his claims with support from cultural texts, including a description of a senior scribe scolding a junior scribe for calculating dimensions improperly. While Mansfield's hypothesis remains unproven, it presents a solid argument justifying more research into the possibility that the Babylonians came before the Greeks with their mathematical developments. Number 3. Neanderthal Cave Art We tend to think of Neanderthals as extremely primitive and unintelligent, but a growing number of discoveries in recent years points toward the opposite. Take for example new research concluding that Neanderthals created cave art. The study focuses on red ochre pigment found on stalactites in a Spanish cave, which scientists concluded did not end up there naturally. Instead, Neanderthals used methods called spattering and blowing to apply the pigment to the stalactites around 60,000 years ago. The findings come on the heels of a 2018 study claiming that Neanderthals painted cave walls in Spain as far back as 65,000 years ago, before humans supposedly inhabited Europe. But the study was controversial, especially because another paper asserted that the red ochre could have gotten onto the cave walls naturally. The new research delved further into the topic and found that the markings are consistent with man-made activities, adding to the realization that our prehistoric cousins were smarter and more talented than we've historically given them credit for. It seems that they, like us, also like to personalize their interiors. Number 2. Tikal Monument Archaeologists are increasingly discovering sites that are buried in the earth and hidden beneath thick foliage thanks to advanced laser scanning technology known as LIDAR. Earlier this year, a team identified a human-made structure buried and concealed by a hill 
in the ancient Maya city-state of Tikal, located in modern-day Guatemala. The structure turned out to be a pyramid that was part of an ancient neighborhood filled with buildings much different from the rest of Tikal. Their shape, orientation, and other architectural features more closely resemble the structures found in the ancient city of Teotihuacan, which is located over 800 miles to the west in what is now Mexico City. A closer look at the site revealed what appears to be a replica of the citadel, a massive square in Teotihuacan. It was recreated in stunning detail, according to researchers. The fact that such a groundbreaking discovery was made at Tikal, one of the world's most extensively excavated sites, shows just how useful LIDAR is when it comes to finding undetected archaeological gems in places where satellite imagery usually fails, including in the thick Central American jungle. The next question for researchers to answer is why a monument resembling Teotihuacan's citadel was implemented in Tikal. One possibility is that cosmopolitan cities of the past were melting pots just like they are today, according to geographer Thomas Garrison. In other words, people of different cultural backgrounds, customs, and languages gathered at the site to engage in rituals that express shared values while retaining their separate backgrounds. Number 1. Reopened Graves Roughly 1,400 years ago, people living in Europe developed an apparent habit of reopening burials and retrieving grave goods for reasons that experts have yet to determine. In a new study, scientists examined five regions throughout the continent where this was known to happen. They found that between the 6th and 8th centuries, people dug up graves and took items that don't seem to be targets in typical grave robberies. Women's brooches and men's swords were among the top choices for objects that were removed from burials. Meanwhile, people left valuable items in the graves, including things made from precious metals like silver and gold. What's even more perplexing is that the objects taken from graves were often in poor condition, with little to no practical or economic value, according to the team. People usually dug up graves within a generation of a deceased individual's burial. In the researchers' words, the most frequent time frame for reopening was after soft tissue decay, but before any wooden container had collapsed or become filled with sediment. It takes just a few years for a body to reach this level of decomposition. Experts proposed that people had different reasons for doing this, and that their motivations varied from one place to the next depending on local concerns and understandings of death and funerary rites. The objects that people took may have had symbolic value, especially considering how swords and brooches were passed down through families as heirlooms. Whatever the reason, the tradition of reopening graves was short-lived. After peaking during the 7th century, the custom waned pretty quickly. Not all researchers agree with the study's conclusion that the grave goods had symbolic significance, or with the determination that burials were reopened within a few years. Because bodies and caskets decompose at different rates depending on the environment, it's hard to say how long after someone's death their family dug up their grave. This was actually the first study that examined the tradition of grave opening throughout Europe as a whole, rather than from a location-specific perspective like a small town making the research valuable in its own right. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!